yesterday I did my live shirtless. Um, I'm going to make it a regular thing. I'm going to do shirtless Saturdays from here on out. Not because I had such an overwhelming response from everybody loving me talking shirtless. That was not the case. Um, the reason why I want to make it a regular thing is because I made a commitment to put myself and my body out there because I feel like it is impossible for me to take a position as a leader in the ADHD community of wanting to lead people to have better lives as a life coach and for people to think that I'm not aware of where my body sits. Um, it's not the case. It was a little bit like I was, I knew that I'd gained weight. I knew that my blood pressure was high. I knew that I wasn't super comfortable, but I hadn't looked at myself in the way that I looked at myself yesterday. I don't know if ever to, to see just the facts, to step away and have just utter truth and say, I'm not going to tell any stories about this body. This is where it's at right now. And I don't fucking like it. This is not who I'm supposed to be. This is not the vessel that is going to carry me to greatness. So I'm going to, I'm going to check in on Saturdays, doing shirtless Saturdays to help keep myself accountable, but also to show somebody else out there what the transformation looks like, because I'm committed to it. I know like, I've been in good shape before. I know what it takes. I know it's hard. I know I'm almost 40 fucking years old. I know it's not going to be as easy as it was five years ago. And it was really hard then, but something has changed in me. I am tired of making excuses. I'm tired of blaming everyone else. I'm tired of life happening to me. And I thought that acknowledging that in my business was enough. I thought that acknowledging that in my relationships was enough and it helped. It certainly it did, but not acknowledging that my life happening to me and my body and my being with God was dragging me down. And the other two that I had accepted it, that I had made efforts to grow in these other two areas, but I was being dragged down because I wasn't able to see the big picture. I wasn't able to see that in order to be a leader, you have to be a, a three, maybe even a four dimensional human being for people to want to follow you. People aren't going to want to follow somebody who doesn't have the awareness to say, this is, I'm not comfortable in this body. And so as I, as I sat there in all of my, you know, shirtless wonder, the cast case, or sorry, the, uh, the collision of emotions that I had really opened up a lot of revelations for me. <laughs> I realized that that sedation that I had accepted with my body had cascaded to all areas of my life. The fact that I had accepted that mediocrity, that that being okay was good and good was good enough, was how I was facing all of my life. As a father, I thought I was good. I'm a good dad. And good dad was good enough. As a businessman, I'm starting a business. I'm doing good, I guess, in the first year. I'm actually making some money. As much as uh, it's weird to say, like, I'm, I, I would say I'm in profit at this point, even though I had a really low overhead. So being in profit was not super hard, but I'm there. So that's good. And I took it as good enough. I brought my blood pressure down some. I didn't ache and hurt every morning when I woke up. Not every morning, a lot of mornings. So that was good. And I just decided that was good enough. And I hadn't, I hadn't acknowledged this distance between myself and God that existed for over 20 years. And that, that I, I was good with just not having God in my life. It was good enough. I was good with not having the highest level of connection with my wife. It was good enough. Whenever you accept mediocrity in one place of your life, before you know it, you've accepted it everywhere. And that mediocrity becomes your new normal. It becomes, it becomes, have you ever heard of how a lobster doesn't realize it's dying? Because if you raise the temperature slow enough, it can't feel the fact that it's being boiled. That's what mediocrity does. That's what sedation does. It allows you to 
slowly be heated up until you're basically dead inside and your life is nothing like what you imagined whenever you thought you were going to be an adult and you were going to be able to make all the decisions you ever wanted. Everything's fucking up to you. It sounds so fun and full of promise whenever you're a kid and then you get there and you realize how overwhelming it is to make all those decisions. So you just take, hey, that's good enough. I'm a mediocre parent, but the kids aren't dead. Good enough. My husband or my wife, my husband, whoever's listening, they don't, they don't get excited to see me like they used to. We don't have sex like we used to. But we still do it sometimes. We don't fight all the time. Good enough. I don't want that. I don't want to accept that mediocrity anymore. I don't want to be a mediocre husband. I don't want to be a mediocre father. I claim to be a messenger of God. I claim to be being called to this purpose. I don't want to do that in mediocrity. I feel like I can't. I can't be effective as doing that as a mediocre person. So I have to become more. I have to take this responsibility seriously. And I have to become relentless in my pursuit for greatness. I want to be a great father. I want to be a great husband. I want to be a great leader of people into better lives. I want to be great at that. I don't want somebody to come into my service and say, he was good. I want them to come into my service and say, holy shit. The person I was before I met him would not recognize the fucking person I am now. That's the kind of transformation I want to be a part of. And if I am not firing on all cylinders if my life isn't right if my if my relationship with my wife isn't right if my body isn't right if my relationship with god isn't right and if i if i know i'm walking around as a shitty father do you think i'm going to be able to provide that for somebody else how would i have the frame to solve the problems for somebody else whenever i can't do it for my fucking self like right now i can get anybody to good enough in all aspects of life i can get you to good enough and that's not good enough. Now, I'm aware that my good enough right now is somebody's great. Somebody who's who is more out of shape is thinking I would I would love to be where he's at right now. I'd love to be only 70 pounds overweight. And they probably weigh 550 pounds, but there is somebody who would think that. There is somebody whose life with their family is a complete nightmare. And they would look at mine and say, "I would love to have what you have." And that's that's fucking fantastic. Your peak is your peak. Your greatness is your greatness. My greatness is not your greatness. It's fucking mine. And you can't have it. But I can help you get your greatness. Unless you want to be physically great right now. I don't have the frame to get you there. I know a lot about fitness. But I'm not in a place where I'm comfortable helping somebody get physically greater than me. Because I'm not there. I wouldn't. I wouldn't trust myself to coach somebody through a physical fitness transformation if that's if that is what their main problem was because i got some shit to work out myself but for those who are struggling with the balance in their families who are struggling to show up as a father and as a husband on a day-to-day basis because they settled with mediocrity that's somebody i can help right now that's something that I've been through. I've been with, I have stuck it out and I've been on the other side. Things for me are so much better as a father and as a husband. But now because I, I have that clarity, I can breathe enough to see what it's like to have some sort of control in that life. I w- I'm greedy. I want more. I, wanted, I want to be the best at being the husband that is me. I want to be the best of being the father that is me. So I have to keep growing, but I'm more than willing to take other people and bring them along with me and teach them what I know and help them grow to become what their grade is. That's it for today. I will talk to you tomorrow.